Whole worlds on the loose, careening wildly across the cosmos, destroying anything in their path. And we're in the middle of it. Vulnerable, exposed, small. Everything is telling us to turn back. But who could defy this? The sun in all its mesmerizing splendor. Our light, our lives. Everything we do is controlled by the sun, depends on it. It's the Greek god Helios driving his chariot across the sky. The Egyptian god Ra reborn every day. The summer solstice sun rising at Stonehenge. For millions of years, this was as close as it got to staring into the face of God. It's so far away. If it burned out, we wouldn't know about it for eight minutes. It's so big, you could fit one million Earths inside it. But who needs numbers? We've got the real thing. We see it every day, a familiar face in our sky. Now, up close, it's unrecognizable. The turbulent sea of incandescent gas. The thermometer pushes 10,000 degrees. Can't imagine how hot the core is. Could be tens of millions of degrees. Hot enough to transform millions of tons of matter into energy every second. More than all the energy ever made by mankind. Dwarfing the power of all the nuclear weapons on Earth. Back home, we use this energy for light and heat. But up close, there's nothing comforting about the sun. Its electrical and magnetic forces erupt in giant molten gas loops. Some are larger than a dozen Earths, more powerful than 10 million volcanoes. through, they expose cooler layers below, making sunspots, a fraction cooler than their surroundings. Sunspots look black, but they're hotter than anything on Earth, and massive, up to 20 times the size of Earth. fuel will be spent. And when it dies, the Earth will follow. This God creates life, destroys it, and demands we keep our distance. This comet strayed too close. The sun's heat is boiling it away, creating a tail that stretches for millions of miles. It's freezing in here. There's no doubt where this comet's from, the icy wastes of deep space. But all this steam, and geysers, and dust, 
It's the sun, again, melting the comet's frozen heart. Strange, a kind of vast, dirty snowball, covered in grimy tar. Tiny grains of what looks like organic material preserved on ice since who knows when. Maybe even the beginning of the solar system. Say a comet like this crashed into the young Earth billions of years ago. Maybe it delivered organic material and water, the raw ingredients of life. It may even have sown the seeds of life on Earth that evolved into you and me. But say it crashed into the Earth now. Think of the dinosaurs, wiped out by a comet or asteroid strike. It's only a question of time. Eventually, one day, we'll go the way of the dinosaurs. If life on Earth was wiped out, we'd be stuck out here, homeless adrift in a hostile universe. We need to find another home. Among the millions, billions of planets, there must be one that's not too hot, not too cold, with air, sunlight, water. We're like Goldilocks. We could comfortably live. The red planet. Unmistakably, Mars. For centuries, we've looked to Mars for company, for signs of life. Could there be extraterrestrial life here? Are we ready to rewrite the history books, to tear up the science books, to turn our world upside down? What happens next could change everything. Mars is the planet that most captures our imagination. Think of B-movies, sci-fi comics. What follows? Martians. It's all just fiction, right? But what if there really is something here? Hard to imagine, though. Up close, this is a dead planet. The activity that makes the Earth livable shut down millions of years ago here. Red and dead. Mars is a giant fossil. Wait. Something is alive. A dust devil. A big one bigger than the biggest twisters back home. There's wind here, and where there's wind, there's air. Could that air sustain extraterrestrial life? It's too thin for us to breathe. And there's no ozone layer, nothing to protect us against the sun's ultraviolet rays. There is water, but frigid temperatures keep it in a constant deep